What is a cell? A cell is defined as a basic building block of life. Cells club together to form a tissue and so does a tissue to form an organ. Therefore, we are what we are because of these basic units of life called cells. There are basically two types that exist, a eukaryotic and a prokaryotic cell. A eukaryotic cell is one in which a nucleus is found along with several organelles, whereas a prokaryotic type is one in which is devoid of a nucleus. A eukaryote can consist of a single nucleus or can have several nuclei. Now, as said earlier, many cells can combine to form a tissue. This is only possible in the case of eukaryotes. Prokaryotic cells always exist by themselves. There are four main types of tissues in our body. They are the epithelial tissue which give rise to our skin along with the linings of various organs and important cavities. The nervous tissue which helps us communicate with our brain. The connective tissue which is the most abundant and the most widely distributed tissue which helps our body with support and protection and the muscle tissue which helps us with motion and many reflex responses. This video is dedicated to muscle cells, so straighten up your body, tighten your muscles and get ready to learn. Muscle cells, technically known as myocytes, are the cells that make up your muscle tissue. Muscles are found all throughout the body and are a crucial part of many systems. There are three basic types of muscles, namely the skeletal, the smooth and the cardiac muscle cells. All three types have different characteristics and features and all perform different functions. Example of some important systems that muscles are a part of are the musculoskeletal system that includes the skeletal muscle, digestive system that includes the smooth muscle and the cardiovascular system that includes the cardiac muscle. These cells are typically red because they are saturated with energy carrying blood required to do their work. However, white fast twitch muscles can produce a large force for a very short period of time. This muscle type is often prevalent in small creatures which need to escape predators quickly and it accounts for their white flesh. The anatomy of muscle cells differ from that of other body cells and biologists have applied specific terminology to different parts of these cells. The cell membrane of such is known as the sarcolemma and the cytoplasm is called the sarcoplasm. These cells comprise of many proteins, the two most common being actin and myosin that form bands in the muscle. Actin and myosin form thick and thin filaments respectively which slides past each other to contract small units of a muscle cell. These units are called sarcomeres and many of them run end to end within a larger fiber called a myofibril. Hence, a muscle cell is a compact bundle of many microfibrils that can either be striated, meaning it appears striped with darker and light sections under a microscope, or non striated, which means they are not striped. The basic unit of a striated muscle is a sarcomere, comprised of actin, which are the light bands, and myosin, which are the dark bands or filaments. A muscle cell's ability to contract or shorten itself permits movement. To activate it, the brain sends an impulse down a nerve. The nerve impulse travels down the nerve cells to the neuromuscular junction where a nerve cell meets it. Muscles can also be classified into two different groups based on their movement which is the voluntary muscles and the involuntary muscles. The voluntary ones are those whose movements can be consciously controlled by us. Skeletal types fall under this category. However, involuntary muscles are those that can move on their own according to their functions. Smooth and cardiac muscles fall under this category. Now that the basics of muscles have already been cited, let's start by learning about the three different structures and basic functions of a muscle cell. Firstly, the voluntary skeletal muscles. These are striated, cylindrical, multinucleated and contains many mitochondria. The reason being that they consume the most energy because of their movement. They are about as long as the muscle they are in, which can be many centimeters. Skeletal muscles are attached to bones by tendons and can be as long as 30 centimeters although they are usually between 2 and 3 centimeters in length, which is roughly an inch. The diameter is about 50 micrometers. This type of a muscle is found on the skeleton which allows the body to run and ride and throw. One interesting fact is that the skeletal muscles can contain up to 100 nuclei. Skeletal muscles makes up about 40% of a person's body mass and there are about 605 skeletal muscle cells. The muscle contraction of striated muscle cells are regulated by calcium ion concentration which is in turn regulated by a structure known as the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This structure is similar to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of other types of cells. To produce contractile force, myosin associates with actin filaments rotating a little and then pulling the filaments across each other like oars propelling a boat. Coming to the involuntary smooth muscle cells, they are spindle shaped, consist of one nuclei and are arranged in sheets. This organization means that they can contract simultaneously. The length is between 50 and 200 microns, whereas the width is 2 to 10 microns, and are the smallest type of muscle cell. 
They are elastic and therefore important in the expansion of organs such as the kidneys, lungs and vagina. The myofibrils of smooth muscle cells are not aligned like in cardiac and skeletal muscle meaning that they are not striated hence the name smooth. They are present in muscular layers of the vessels and within internal organs so it is responsible for moving and contracting the stomach, bowels and blood vessels. They are also present in the eye and contract changing the shape of the lens causing the eye to focus. Lastly, the cardiac muscle cells. They are rectangular in shape consisting of a single nucleus containing many mitochondria and communicate via intercalated discs. They are present in the myocardium also known as the cardiac muscle that is they are found in the heart and helps the heart to pump blood. The length of a cardiac muscle is about 0.1 mm while it is about 0.02 mm wide. There are about 2 billion cardiac muscle cells. Cardiomyocytes are large and muscular and are structurally connected by intercalated discs which have gap functions for diffusion and communication. The disc appears as dark bands between cells and are a unique aspect of cardiomyocytes. They result from membranes of the adjacent myocytes being very close together and form kind of a glue between cells. This allows the transmission of contractile force between cells as electrical depolarization propagates from cell to cell. The key role of cardiomyocytes is to generate enough contractile force for the heart to beat effectively. They contract together in unison, causing enough pressure to force blood around the body. Well, that is all about muscles. Now we can safely conclude that muscles are key to movement, posture, internal bodily functions, and nearly all movement in the body is a result of muscle contraction. In addition to movement, muscle contraction also fulfills some other important functions in the body such as posture, joint stability, and heat production. So do like, share and subscribe for other related content about cells and microorganisms.